a bad storm. And I, it, was, it felt like a thing was going to turn over. Boat about as big as, I don't know, about as long as from here to the wall back there, I guess. Maybe had 150 people on it, something like that. And man, them waves go and that thing go like this. And waves come by and they go back like this. I mean, you could see down. And that's, oh boy, that's a scary feeling. You can't pull off on the side of the road like you can in the car. I mean, you're stuck out there in the, in the mercy of God. It's the only thing that gets you through. Here in Acts chapter 27, now a boat sailing through a sea is a type of the Christian life. That's the way a Christian life is. Sometimes it's easy and smooth. Sometimes it's rough and dangerous. Acts 27, 9. Acts 27, 9, verse 9. Now when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous. See that? Dangerous. Because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sir, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and, and ship, but also of our lives. Now I want to preach to you for just a few minutes on the subject Danger points in the Christian life. Danger points in the Christian life. Um, the word danger means a threat of harm. You know, you're, you're in trouble, peril. Many times you've been driving on a road and you see a sign that says ice on the road. I, was, I drove uh, to, t- to Kentucky the other day. And there was still some snow on the interstate going up toward above Knoxville on up north. And there were some dangerous slick spots. And sometimes you see danger signs that says ice on road or blasting, men working, hard hat area, high voltage, uh, things like that. And when, it, when you come to something like that, that means you're supposed to be careful. You're supposed to watch out. Proceed with caution. Now, I believe tonight, from experience, I know that the Christian life is, has danger points in it. There are times in your Christian life when you have to be more careful than at other times. There are certain times in your life when you better watch out right then when you'll wreck. And you'll make shipwreck of your life. And many people have. Um, I was coming over from Asheville one night and I was headed this way. It's the winter time. And you know over there where that... Uh, now the interstate goes kind of around the curve. It slants like that right around Black Mountain and it's slanted like a racetrack. And you go on around by Black Mountain going to Asheville. Before that road opened up, you had to come right through Black Mountain coming from Asheville to Marion. And uh, I was coming that way, but they had that bridge there. And on one of those bridges. And I was flying down through there. I noticed that um, there was some cars stopped on both sides of the road and car. And just all of a sudden, I was there. And I thought, I wonder why them people stopped. And about that time, I got underneath that bridge, and I felt the car start doing like this. It was solid ice. And two of them, one of them had already wrecked and hit the other one. And there was other people just kind of slid to the side, just sitting there, couldn't even move. Well, next before I realized it, I was on a solid sheet of ice. Well, of course, what I'd done, as soon as I found out that I was on that ice, I... Uh, immediately, just have both hands on the wheel, let off the gas, and let straight ahead. You do not put on your brakes when you hit a sheet of ice. Amen? I mean, I didn't try to stop. There was no stopping. My only hope was just to wiggle through them, them other cars. And sure enough, by a miracle of the Lord, I reckon, I just went right between them cars and went through and came out on the other side. And I didn't get scared till I was about a half a mile on down past that. Has that ever happened to you? You know, when you almost have a wreck, you know, about a half mile later, you just get hot all over. <laughs> you think, ha, ah, I almost got killed. And it, but at the time, it's over so fast that you don't even realize it. And boy, I was flying down through there. There were no signs or nothing. It just froze underneath there. It's kind of wet. And then all of a sudden, just ice. And all I done was let off the gas and just went straight. You don't want to turn. You don't want to hit. Just let it coast right underneath that ice. And that's what I did, and I made it through. That was a dangerous point between Marion and he, or between Black Mountain and Marion. Now I want to tell you this this evening: there are some dangerous places in the Christian life. 
And I want to tell you, young people, something, moms and dads, something, there are certain times in your Christian life you, you don't try to go too fast. And don't hit your brakes and stop. Just coast right on through it till it's over with. You better be careful. You better be careful. Now I want to say first of all tonight, uh, the first danger point in the Christian life is when you first desire to be filled with the Spirit. When a person really gets on fire for God and has a desire to be filled with the Holy Ghost, it's a dangerous time. You say, Brother Danny, I can't believe you're saying that. I thought that all God's people were supposed to be filled with the Holy Ghost. They are. I didn't say it was a good, wasn't a good time. I said it's a dangerous time. Because right then, if you're not careful, is when the devil will slip something in on you that God don't want you to have. I'll never forget when I first got saved. I was just like, I wanted everything God had for me. I, whatever God had, I said, I want it. Whatever God's got, I want it. That's a, that's a good desire, but a dangerous time. Cause right then, it, you'll get mixed up with everything. I went to more different kinds of meetings, every kind of revival. I went to play, I had women preachers lay hands on me. I mean, they, well, I thought we was in the tribulation. I, I thought, well, I didn't know, you know, you hear all kinds of stuff like that. Thank God He got me through that without wrecking. Thank God I come out on the other side of that and made it. But you gotta be careful when you first really, really get on fire and want to do something for God. My advice, a lot of young people, a lot of young, young people get up and they say, boy, I just want to do something for God. And they launch out and mess up and make shipwreck when what you ought to do is sit in the church for a while and get fed and grow and take it easy and learn and come up and learn under the ministry and then go on with your life. It's dangerous for a young preacher to want to jump out in the ministry too quick. It's dangerous. You'll hit an icy spot and wreck and half kill yourself. I've seen a lot of them do that. Go off half caught. I've seen a lot of them say, Brother Danny, I believe the Lord's coming. I better hurry and go out and do a work. Now listen, brother, I believe the Lord's coming too. But I know one thing. If you go off before you're ready, the devil will chew you up and spit you out and you'll wreck and then come back and say, I wish I'd have never done that. That's a dangerous point in the Christian life. Uh, I, the devil can slip you a counterfeit. I remember one time, we had some folks uh, from over in West Marion come to the church and up yonder in, in the old building, they used to come regular. they come and just been saved just a few weeks. And we went off somewhere and come back late one Saturday night. Somebody was up there, up in the, in the parking lot waiting on us. They said, Preacher, you got to come. They said every one of them's all confused. They said they wasn't coming back to church, about 10 or 15 of them. A new convert, they said they're not coming back to church. They said we taught them wrong and, and all that. And I said, what? So we went out there and sat around in the living room. They got them all together. We began to talk. And somebody from the church of Christ had got to them. And boy, they told them, they said, now you people are not really saved. They said them people down there at New Manor are, are crazy, you know, in so many words. They, they're teaching false doctrine. They said, you haven't even got baptized yet. You're not saved. See, the church of Christ teaches, listen to me, the church of Christ teaches that you have to be baptized in water before you're saved and going to heaven. I want to say to you tonight, that's heresy. That's, that's of the devil. Uh, that's not true. The water don't have anything to do with your salvation. You're saved by by the grace of God before you ever get in that water. And if you ain't saved before you get in it, you ain't going to be saved when you get out of it. Uh, you ain't going to get saved while you're under. Of course, I have heard of them holding them, holding them, holding them, holding them. Maybe they get saved, I don't know. But the water don't do it. And there are them people all confused. And they said, well, we don't know. We're not." Ready. And I said, let me tell you folks something. I said, let's look here what the Bible said. And I showed them, you know what? They wanted right. They wanted to do right. But somebody jumped on them. That's a dangerous time. Have you ever noticed that as soon as you get right with God, all these so-called, quote, Christians come out of the woodwork and tell you all that's wrong with your church and all that you shouldn't believe like this and you should believe like... You know what I told them that night? I said, where was they all that time when you was living in sin? Yeah. Amen? Why did they, why do you got saved and try to do right before they pounce on you and try to, quote, straighten you out? 
They ain't got nothing to tell somebody who's not saved. They wait till you get them saved and then they'll jump on them and try to cram that stuff down their throat. You know what you better do? You better be real careful. You better get in there and grow and give God time to work on you and let that Bible sink in and grow in grace. Don't go off half cocked. That's a dangerous point in your Christian life. We had a man saved up in the old building one time. Suddenly he found out we didn't know what we was talking about. Suddenly he found out some... Everybody, and that guy got messed up and he ain't been worth a dime since. Not a dime. You know what? He come to an icy spot. He right. He's in the ditch tonight. He still goes to church, but he's doing no good for God. He's doing a church where they don't win so. I don't understand. Now, don't, don't get mad at me. I don't, I know if you're in, in concentration camp in, in a foreign country or you're in communist country, it may be different. I don't understand a church in America where there's 250 million people having 30 20 years ago and still having 30 now. Something ain't right somewhere. Amen. People say, boy, at our church, we had a great revival. That church had a great revival and their attendance don't even increase. I'm going to tell you, that ain't a Bible revival. Amen? In the Bible, when God moved, brother, sinners get in. Boy, that's a weak amen. When, when the church gets right, sinners get saved. David said, then will I teach transgressors that way? We can have an emotional stir. A lot of them have an emotional stir and supposedly have a big revival and then nobody gets saved. That ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. But when God's church gets right, she bears fruit. She bears fruit. It's dangerous to get all emotionally uh, 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 worked up and say, glory to God, great revival. No souls getting saved, there ain't no revival. They get saved when that, after that revival hits. Amen? When you first desire to be filled with the Spirit. Second. Second. This is going to strike you as unusual. Listen to me. When you first have, have your first baby, you know you're at an icy spot in your Christian life when you have a baby. I'm talking about husband and wife. I've seen more people backslide after they have a baby than about any other one thing. And I can understand why. you got to remember this. you got to remember the devil's smart, people. And the devil don't care why you're out of church just as long as you're out. You cannot miss church three and four and five Sundays and then come and can't listen while you're here for two years and it not affect you spiritually. Amen? That's why we have a nursery. So you lady, listen, you've been, you've been pregnant all this time, husband having to work extra to pay the bills, and you're all worried about the baby and back and forth to the doctor and all of that stuff, and that's a natural, that's a natural process. I mean, that's the way God intended for it to be. But you know, you're real sick. You can't get nothing spiritually. You can't read your Bible. You can't pray. And then the first thing you know, uh, the baby's born and you're all excited and that's good. That's wonderful. Nothing wrong with that. And then the doctor, what does the doctor say? First thing the doctor says is, now you can't have this baby around crowds. You better not take it to church. I believe it's a devil puts that in the doctor's mind to tell you that. Oh brother Danny, oh brother Danny, your foot. I don't believe God wants you to keep it at home. It's dangerous for you. You say, well they'll catch cold. Notice the doctors, listen, them doctors make another appointment. You have to bring it back every week. And the sickest people in town sitting in the doctor's office. Everybody in there is sick. <laughs> don't, listen, man. Don't you, don't you, why don't the doctor say, you better not have this baby around no doctor's offices. That's where all the sick people hang out. Amen, brother Danny. Preach that, preach. Listen, that's my job. I'm a preacher. I'm supposed to help you. Don't you ever think, every time, if a doctor finds out you go to church, the devil put it in his mind to tell you, now you better not sing in the choir. You better not be involved in another church. Listen, man, the sickest people in town is in the doctor's office. If they practice what they preach, they'd tell you not to go there. Amen. Put something over it. I can't wait. So come and get you a blessing from God. Hey, I know some people used, they used to be in the bus ministry on fire for God till they had a baby and ain't been worth a dime for God since. That's not right. It's not right. It's not right. Anything that comes in your life like that ought to make you closer to God, not further away. 
You ought to do more for God. You people got out of the bus ministry because you have babies. You ought to come up here, get you a girl to babysit, take it with you on Saturday, get back in there just soon. Amen? I'd be afraid. I'd be afraid something happened to my baby, man, if I let it keep me out of the will of God. Carrie's sitting over there. She was born on Monday. She's at church on Sunday. Been here ever since. And I want to tell you what, brother. Listen, our kids need to be in the house of God. When they're, when they're sick, bring them anyway. I mean, if they're dying, you don't. But you know what I'm talking about. Don't let the devil use that baby to knock you out of the will of God. Hey, let them, them baby girls back in the nursery. They'll watch it, take care of it. Get in here and get you a blessing. You'll be backslid before you know it. See? It cries. That's why I tell the nurse, there ain't no use getting a baby just because it's crying. It's good for babies to cry. Turn the thing on just a little bit, Roy. It's good for babies to cry. Babies are supposed to cry. You say every time it cries, oh, I get, let it cry. Let it lay there and cry a little while. That's good. It'll be good in the youth choir one of these days. Let it get some lungs, man. According to our youth choir, they must have done some crying when they was little. <laughs> but I want to tell you what, man. Listen, that's good for them. Let them cry. Let them cry a little bit. It ain't going to kill them. You don't have to run every time they burp. I mean, brother, leave them alone. It's natural for babies to cry. Listen, don't you let them keep you from doing God's will. Don't you let... Yeah, listen, I, I'm a preacher. I go to church almost seven days a week, at least four or five days a week, and sometimes seven days a week when I'm preaching all the time, and it's, it takes all I can do to stay where I ought to stay with God. You can't miss church on a regular regular basis and then not pay attention when you are here and get what you need from God. That's a dangerous spot in your life. Don't let that baby keep you from God. It's a danger point. Number three, another slick, icy spot in the Christian life is when everything is going good. I thought I was going to say bad, didn't I? When everything's going good, it's about more dangerous than when everything's going bad. You know why? Because when everything's going good, we get slack. When everything's going good, we prop up our foot. I don't know. I have to drive a lot. Don't, don't be mad at me for this. But man, you get tired sitting in the same. Matter of fact, I can't hardly stand to sit down, period. Now, I went and watched the boys play ball. Everybody wants to sit down? I don't want to sit down. I want to stand up. If I can't play, I'm going to stand up and watch them. I'd sure have to hate, sit, sit there like a whole service like yums do. I'm glad. I'm like that little boy that used to sit on the front, you know. He told his mama, he said, Mama, I'm going to be a preacher when I grow up. She said, why? He said, because if i got to go to church anyway, it looks like a lot more fun to get to stand up there and bless everybody out than to sit here on the front row. So I'm like that. It's a lot more fun to get up here and bless everybody out. But I, when I'm driving, man, I'm like this. And 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 I put my cruise control on. And I'm like this. And I put my foot up there. Then I put my feet over here like this. I've done that lots of times. I know it's dangerous. And you're not supposed to do it. But I'm about to die. You know what? You hit a spot, buddy. You just, you just. We had a good church before he started coming here. And you other cops, y'all just. This is an illustration. This is an illustration. I'm telling you, man, you drive eight, ten hours like that, and I'm squirming. I'm squirming. And I put the cruise on, you know, I drive like this, drive like this, drive my elbow, drive my knee, do everything. But boy, you hit an icy spot when that ice comes. It's like I've got both feet down here. I got the cruise off. I couldn't use that cruise coming in that snow from Alabama. I have my hands like this. I'm looking straight ahead just like this. Watching every move. When you know you're at a danger point, listen, when everything's going good, and my wife kept worrying about me, she called me, Kathy called me twice, sitting out on my phone, on the car phone, this, everybody's scared I was going to wreck. Now what I told her, I said, listen, I stand a lot more chance of wrecking on a normal trip than I do here, because I'm, I'm paying attention, I'm going slow, I'm going easy. Well, on them normal trips when I'm going to wreck. You know why? When everything's going good, and you ain't got no problem. And everything's smooth. That's when you'll wreck if you ain't careful. Hey, that's why sometimes I worry about us. I worry about our church. Have you noticed how good everything's went for us the last couple of years? My Lord, have we had a couple of years. Well, I'll tell you, the last year and a half has been the greatest year and a half of the history of this church. God's blessed us. Uh, the youth out there at the camp, camps went great. The school, everything. I mean, I mean, God, I mean, the devil fights, of course, but it's been good, hasn't it? I mean, we've enjoyed the blessings of God. The attendance has been bigger. The crowd's been better. You know what that is? It's t- Time to, you better grab a hold of that wheel and be real careful because you'll wreck when everything's going good. Amen. 
God will put you in the ditch so you'll depend on Him again when everything's going good. God lets little things happen to put you back on your knees. Whoa, what about right there? Whoa, I better pay attention. See? That's the way your Christian life is. Grab a wheel. Watch out. I'll tell you something, brother. I may do like this and put it on cruise when everything's all right. But when I know I'm hitting the icy spot, I grab a wheel. I grab a wheel. I ain't stupid. I ain't stupid. When I, I'm going to grab a wheel. You can get killed. And a Christian life is the same way. Some of you sitting here tonight, your kids are happy, your bills are paid, you've never had it better in your life. It's a dangerous time, man. It's a dangerous time. You better hang on to that wheel. It ain't no time to be missing church. It ain't no time because you'll wreck and the devil will tear your family up. The devil will tear your, your home up and the devil will wreck your Christian life. Amen. When everything's going good. I got to thinking about how God blessed us with Brother, Brother Robbie and, and Sandra and it's our family. God sent them here to help us. There's no doubt about it. You know, at first we was all worried and I felt guilty of him coming and he didn't, we weren't sure it's God's will and everything. But boy, as time goes on, there's no doubt in my mind God sent him down here to help us. God sent him down here. God, God sent Brother Shirley, just as sure as we're sitting here. God sent Brother Mosley. God sent all these people, the Hefners, and them that's come in to help us and all of that. God sent them. God looked down and smiled on us and said, put them over here and put them over here and brought them here to help us. Oh, brother, we better grab a hold of the wheel. Listen, listen. Some of you people sitting right here tonight, youth rallies coming up. Oh, you know what some of you think? Uh, you know what some of you are thinking? It's hard not to think it. It's just like when you always win. Win, 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 win. You always think we all, hey man, I, ask some of these boys about that. I want to tell you what, brother. Listen, let me tell you this evening. Let me tell you this evening. The youth rally don't automatically be good. I mean, brother, the devil can get in here and tear it up. The devil can buy. We better get on our face and pray and fast and beg God Almighty to pour His power out on us once again. It ain't too early to start. We better start now. I'm calling on somebody to begin to fast for the youth rally starting now and go ever how long or ever how often God lays it on your heart. I mean it. I mean it. I mean I'm doing it myself. I ain't th- telling you to do something I ain't going to do myself. By the grace of God, pray and fast that God will touch in the youth rally, in the revival coming up. Well, we got Brother Eddie White, Brother Larry Brown. We're going to have a great revival. Not necessarily. There ain't no man. No man can do a work like that unless God gets in the preaching in the same. Hey Amen. When everything's going good, you better look out. Better look out when everything's going good. You better look out. The devil will knock you for a loop. Many have had their faith undermined. The prosperity of fools should destroy them, the Bible said. You young people, Young people, you better watch out. You say, well, praise God, I get to sing a new man of youth choir. I know, we go travel, we take trips, we do this, we do that, all that. That don't make you stay right with God. Some of y'all going to hit an icy spot in your life. And that's why I'm always telling you parents, watch them, watch them. Watch every move they make. Don't let them out of your sight. Don't let them go somewhere where you don't know where they're going, who they're with. All it takes is one icy spot. They can wreck. They can be a good driver, but they can wreck. Hitting an icy spot, not being ready for it. Number, number four, when everything is going bad. You say, well, Brother Danny, you just got through saying everything's going good, it's dangerous. When everything's going bad, it's dangerous. I've seen people that were dedicated after a sickness or after a divorce or something like that. Never was no count for God. And my, my heart goes out to them. But some people, I don't see how they went through what they went through. I, I really don't. But I tell you, I've seen people that's on fire for God live for the Lord, serve the Lord, and then maybe their husband leave them or wife leave them or something like that, and they get so discouraged, it's just like a real icy spot. You better watch it when you're in that thing right there. When you're in that thing right there, you better hold on to the wheel. You better not miss a service. You better get in there every time the door's open. You better pray. You better fast because you can wreck your Christian life. You see, where you want to be is somewhere in between. You don't want everything going good. You don't want everything going bad. If everything goes good, you quit praying. If everything goes bad, you get discouraged. You where you want just enough trouble to keep you in here and keep you right with God where you need to be when everything's going bad. Financially, it can drag you down. Death 
you can get bitter when everything's going bad. You say, Brother Danny, everything's going bad. I'm not that close to just giving up. Don't give up. Just put your hand on the wheel and proceed with caution. You'll be past it in a little while. It'll smooth out. You say, well, this ain't no just a little icy spot I'm in. Well, you might be like I was in the other day. Nearly 500 miles of it. And 200 miles of it was rain, I guess, from Birmingham. Well, from Atlanta up to Greenville was about rain. But the rest of it was some form of frozen precipitation about it. And I was almost 500 miles. You may be in one of them long ones. But just stay steady. Be careful. Number five. Anytime you go through a major change in your life, changing jobs, marriage. I worry about people that's right with God and then say, God, give me this person to marry. And then as soon as they get married, they don't serve God. I don't know if God is in a marriage like that or not. You get married, it ought to make you to be more right with God, not less right with God. Amen? People say, well, oh, so-and-so, I mean, I'm, we're going to get married, but they don't want to live for the Lord. Well, so, God didn't give you that person. God don't send you somebody that don't want you to live right. You say, well, I love them. Do you know you can quit loving somebody? Some of you young people need to understand that. You can quit loving somebody. You think you can't. You think, well, I'll never love, not love anybody. Oh, that's a bunch of bull, man. Uh, listen, you, you can change that. I mean, it, wait on God. Wait on God. It's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing. You say, I thought you said love never faileth. I didn't say it failed. I said that kind can quit. When you go through a major change, you've got to be careful. I tell these kids all the time, they want to get married, want to get married, want to get married. I say, listen, you got your whole life ahead of you. Once you cross that line, I mean, that's it, man. You're in there. You don't go back and get out of it like that. I mean, you're in then. You better pray. You better wait. You better. You say, well, they're a good Christian. You better wait and pray and wait on God. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You better listen to me. You better listen to me. You get yourself in more trouble than you ever dreamed. And some of you wind up giving up on God. If you're not careful about that thing. College, same way. Same way. Some of you got, you got a choice where you want to go to school. Like um, even our school, something like that. You better choose what's right. You better choose what's right. I mean, brother, there's more things in life than money. There's more things in life than a career. There's more things in life than being popular. You better choose what's right. You check that Bible out. Check that Bible out. Abraham and Lot went down. Read your stories in your Bible. They went down there and Abraham said, which way do you want to go? Lot looked up and he said, man, I want to go over there. That's pretty country and I love it and all of that. You know where he wound up? In Sodom. And he wound up, brother, being vexed with a, with a wicked conversation of those wicked homosexuals. And God had to drag him out of there and get him back where he's supposed to be. Listen, I don't want that to happen. Stay with God. Stay with God. Stay with God. I, I, I worry about... Uh, somebody said not long ago they was going to get a job promotion or something and move to, I don't know, Florida or somewhere. And their pastor asked them, they said... You already checked out to see if there's a good Bible preaching church there. Where are you going? Oh, well, I don't know, preacher. We'll find somewhere. Hey, man, I would move my family. I would not take my family and move it to a place where I didn't even know there's a good church to take them to. They, their things more important than a dollar bill. Amen. I want, listen, I want my kids in a Bible preaching church where they can hear the Word of God and see people shout and run the aisles and praise God. And listen, if they ain't one of them, I ain't interested in living there if they ain't one of them around. I ain't interested. When everything is going wonderful, when everything is going bad, when you go through a major change, when you join something, you don't realize it till it's too late a lot of times. I told this girl one time down here in Nebo, she's getting ready to marry this guy, and I told her, I said, now, you know, I, I began to try to talk to her a little bit, and nothing else would do her. She wanted to marry him. She wanted to marry him. He turned out to have a drinking problem. 
He turned. I don't. He wasn't good to her. And you know what happened? He wound up getting killed in a car wreck. And I saw her just a young widow there bawling at the funeral. And had had, a, had those scars on her life and on her body just because she would not listen to God and do what's right. She would not. She would not. I wish. I don't know. I don't know how to do it. I, I preach these girls, you're blue in the face, man. And you tell them and tell them and tell them. But somehow or another, when a girl feels love in her heart, she just lets, sometimes she lets her convictions, she lets God, she, everything just goes out the window. She thinks everything's worth giving up for that. Girls, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. You live to see the day when you wished you had never left God and you'd have stayed straight. You'll live to see that day. If it wasn't so embarrassing, if it wasn't so embarrassing, we get all of our teenagers. I thought about this so many times. We get our teenagers together on Sunday and we let people right out of our church go in there and tell them what's happened to them. And I, I don't want, I hate for our kids to even know what some of your people have been through. There's some dangerous points in your life. And you better stay straight. If you don't, then. Oh, I'm all right, preacher. Everything going. You ever see that icy spot right up ahead? You'll, you'll fish tail there. Next thing you know, you'll run into something and hit the ditch. God help you not to do that. All right, let's stand by our heads for prayer. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I'm talking to the whole church right now. We're at a dangerous point. We're on dangerous ground right now. You say, preacher, I, we're, in, we're in good shape. Yeah, I know. That's the danger spot. When everything's going good, it's dangerous. Some of you haven't been on the altar in months. Some of you haven't been. Listen, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Listen, you take, start taking God for granted. You start taking the Lord's blessing for granted. You better get right, man. You better quit. You better, you better come. You better get on the altar. You can wreck just like that. You can, I mean, the devil can tear your home up. He can wreck your Christian life. I mean, if you don't believe it, you don't believe it, you give him half a chance. If you've been slack, that's right. There ain't nothing wrong. I don't care if there's 200 people comes up here. Come on. Come on. Just crowd around this altar tonight. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's get right with God. Let's ask the Lord to help us. Young people, teenagers, mamas, daddies. You, well, you've been slack. You've been slack. You don't think, hey, you don't think the, you don't think you can wind up with cancer? Buddy, that's what a lot of people think. You know, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just saying, when you think nothing's wrong, that's when the devil's coming in the back door. God, have mercy on us. Father, do what ought to be done. Lord, help us tonight. Bless our church. God, don't let us be too easy. We don't want to wreck. God, we don't want to wreck. We don't want to be a, people, a church that people talks about that used to have the power of God. Lord, God forbid, help us to be careful through these icy spots that we travel through when it's dangerous. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes, amen. Let's sing.